welcome to Next Game's Odyssey series. Now I've covered many aspects of Odyssey in my lengthy series, but I've never covered what I find to be the best way to farm RP on Boomba. Now it can also be used to get RP on any of the other 16 Atonement NMs that your static group does not do. Now I had heard about this farming strategy for a while now, but was always scared to potentially waste my segments not doing it correctly, so it's something I just continually put off. However, in the last week, I finally decided to devote my segments to figuring it out, and I felt it would be good to post a video showing exactly what I learned worked best for me to hopefully demystify this strategy for some others. Now, there is a lot of pieces to this farming technique, so I will start at the beginning. First, you will need to beat all 17 Atonement NMs on Vengeance Zero. Now, this can be done solo, but know that Ongo, Embus, and Boomba are all very challenging to solo, and do require quite a bit of luck, so you may want to save those to take on with a group. Now a group is what will be needed for your next step, to take on the first 16 Atonement NMs on Vengeance 5. Now taking on all 33 of those NMs is definitely the most challenging part of this strategy, but once done you will have unlocked access to Vengeance 5 Boomba. Now I have examples of how to do all of these fights both solo and with a party on my channel, so if you're having trouble be sure to check them out. Now you will want to beat one of the Atonement 1MMs on Vengeance 10 and Vengeance 15. This can also be done solo, and you can find videos on my channel showing you how to do that. Now I recommend doing this with Daylon D, as I find him the easiest to take on at the Vengeance 20 difficulty, which is what we'll be taking him on at for this technique to work. Now once you've beaten him on Vengeance 15, you have unlocked that Vengeance 20 fight that we need. Now at this point, we can now use the farming technique I'll mention to get 4400 RP approximately on any NM that we choose, but it's going to require you to spend 13,500 segments to do so. Now keep in mind that at this stage you can only take these pieces of gear up to rank 15, and you will also want to make sure that you have 9,000 segments, 3 Magnaphone 2s, and 1 Mog Amplifier before attempting this run or you will not have all the necessary segments to complete the run. Let's go ahead and start with your prep work. You will need three jobs that can each do at least 6% damage to a rank 20 D-Lan D. To do this, I suggest you plan ahead on the jobs and trust you will be using, as you cannot use the same job twice or the same trust twice in the three runs that we'll be doing at the start. For me, I chose Dragoon, Red Mage, and Ninja. That is also the order in which I'll be using them in. Now, Dragoon, I made sure to use RTV to tank, as well as Cornelia for haste. And note, if Cornelia isn't available, you can always use Mayakov for some additional haste in her place. I then use Arcelia for some additional haste, and Monboro and Chirukiki for curing. Note that the amount of healing isn't entirely necessary that I put here, so you don't have to have Monboro if you don't have him yet. You can always replace him with another white mage, such as Farius Coffin. Next, on Red Mage, we will use August to tank, Olmia for haste, and Yignis and Kara Burua for curing. I also throw in RTT for some extra damage, but really anyone can go into that fist slot. Now lastly, Ninja, where I will bring in Joachim and Koromoru for haste, and Sethus and Kupipi I'll be using for curing. In that fist slot, I went ahead and threw in Chantoto too for some extra damage, but again, you can really fit anything into that fist slot. So now that we have our jobs and trusts selected, we need to make sure that we have four separate methods of re-raise, an accuracy food, I use Seafood Gratin, and that Mog Amplifier that I previously mentioned. Once all six of these items are in hand, head into Shield Jail. Now you will first head up with your Dragoon and take on Delon D on the Vengeance 20 difficulty. Once inside, make sure you immediately put up re-raise and then summon your trust. You will always want to pull Delon D down to the platform below where he spawns so that you can safely get up after you die. Once pulled there, you want to get to work to getting your 6-7% to of the damage in. Once Delon D is at 93%, you want to unsummon your trust and die. Now make sure to wait until Delon D is out of range. I'll normally wait until he's at the top of the ramp and usually will disappear, and then you want to get up and let the remaining 10 minutes of your run timing out, and then you will get kicked back to the lobby. You will normally get 17 RP for what you've just done. You will now enter Dalon D on Vengeance 20. 
This time no, you will be using your second job of Red Mage. Make sure to put up re-raise before summoning your trust and engage once again Delon D, pulling him down to the platform below and this time taking him down to 88% health because he will have started at 95% health. Once he's at that 88, unsummon your trust, die in a safe location, and then of course, once he has left the area, you will once again get up and wait the remaining 10 minutes of your run until you once again get kicked back to the lobby with a reward of once again 17 resource points. You will now enter the Daylon D fight a third time on Vengeance 20 after switching to your third job, in our case, Ninja. Make sure to put up a re-raise before summoning Trust, and then engage the mob once again pulling D to the platform below, and now taking him down to 83% health, as he will have started the run at 90%. It is critical you do not take him below 75%, or he will spawn an add and start regening, and this entire thing will not work. Once he's at 83% health, you can either unsummon your trust as we have done before and die in a safe location, or if you're on Ninja, I find it quite easy to just disengage and shadow tank him for the remaining 10 minutes so that I don't lose any mastery points. Whichever method you choose, you want to once again let the run time out, but this time you will be kicked entirely out of jail as your three Moglophone 2s have been expended, but you will see an interesting message in your log saying, you now receive more RP because you used a Moogle amplifier, even though we did not. We are now ready to do our Boomba farming run. Get three more Moglophone 2s and then re-enter Shield Jail. I recommend doing this on Ninja, but you can do it on any job you wish that you know you can deal more than 6% of the damage to Boomba in less than 4 minutes without skill chain. Once in jail, enter the Vengeance 5 Boomba fight and once in there, make sure to use re-raise, your Moogle amplifier, and your accuracy food. Now the most common way to get damage done to Boomba without skill chains is by the use of Savage Blade Spam. So I recommend equipping Nagling for this fight with a weapon skill damage boosting offhand weapon as the evasion of Boomba is a bit high for the proper use of Hitaki or a Kraken Club. Now I start the fight with full buffs including Gekka, Kaka, Yonin, Isikigen, Yain and Myoshu, and then I engage Boomba. I get a quick Savage Blade in for hate, and then pull him to one of the side walls to prevent knockback. Now the clock is ticking from the moment you engage Boomba, and you have just 4 minutes to do that 6% of his health that you need to do. Now in all of my runs, I normally got him to about 88% health within about 3 minutes. Now once you have the proper amount of health gone, you want to then run for the starting platform and use Mijin Galkri to die in a safe location and prevent the loss of mastery points. Now, if you aren't using Mijin Galkri, you can stay on the side wall or pull him up to the platform, but at that four minute mark, he's going to start spawning fetters, and then we'll have the ability to use Denounce, which will immediately end your run. Now, the risk here is if he spawns fetters and then uses Denounce immediately after that, it can waste all of these segments that you've just spent on doing this process. This occurred to me in my second run, trying this strategy, and I was unable to safely get back up without the fetter killing me. Therefore, it's for this reason that I always use this Majin Galkri strategy now, and why I so strongly recommend that you use Ninja for this final part of this strategy in the fight against Boomba, if you have the ability to do so. Now, over the first four minutes of fighting Boomba, he isn't very hard, and you can just ignore keeping your shadows up, but I'd keep Migawari up for the duration of those 4 minutes just in case one of his abilities hits you rather hard. Now once you die, stay down until Boomba gets back to his starting location at the center of the arena. Then, get up. You will now rest here for the remaining 10 minutes of the run until you're kicked back to the lobby, at which time you will be rewarded with close to 4400 RP for your hour of hard work and 13,500 segments. As long as you can farm the segments, you can use this strategy indefinitely to get all of your gear from Odyssey to rank 15 without any further use of groups. Now this strategy can be very helpful for groups that are solely focused on a small number of NMs or for the many people who have had their static fall apart after getting to some of the higher vengeance levels. Speaking of vengeance levels, if you now want to get higher than rank 15 on your gear, you're going to need to beat that NM on Vengeance 15 to unlock access to rank 20. And then again on Vengeance 20, 
to unlock access to rank 25 for the items upgradable through that NM. Now a few weeks back, I was fortunate enough to find a group who took me in on a Vengeance 15 Boomba win, so I've been able to finally get all of my Naomi gear to rank 20 using this technique I'm showing you today. And I'll be switching to upgrading my other Odyssey gear and storing up segments in hopes that I can find a group to do a Vengeance 20 Boomba clear with. That's going to be all the information I have to share for today. I hope you found that helpful and that that cleared up some of the confusion around this process. If you're new to my channel and enjoyed the content, please be sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified when my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.